autophagy and building muscle are almost two completely opposite things. Autophagy is cellular repair, recycling. Building muscle is pro-growth, it's mTOR. Autophagy is something that's associated with a deficit, not eating, AMPK phosphorylation, everything that's associated with like repair and deficit, whereas building muscle is associated with mTOR and growth, right? So you almost have to compromise muscle for autophagy or compromise autophagy for muscle. But now there is newer literature that suggests otherwise. I'm gonna read an excerpt from the study. Muscle protein autophagy is not modulated by protein ingestion. Okay, what does that mean? It means in this particular study, published in Cell Reports, when subjects consumed protein, it didn't negatively impact autophagy, it didn't stop autophagy. Could this change everything? Like, could you be in a caloric deficit eat some protein and actually not stop autophagy? Perhaps, let's break it down even more. After today's video, I put a link down below for Thrive Market. That is a 30% off discount link, so it gets you 30% off whatever you load up in your grocery cart, and then it gets delivered to your doorstep. So it's 30% off whether you want snacks, whether you want meat, whether you want whatever from Thrive Market. So you load up your grocery cart, use that special link, and then it gets delivered to your doorstep. And there's also a free $60 gift that you get as well when you use that special link down below. Thrive Market has been a sponsor for over half a decade on this channel. So if you support them, you directly support this channel and it helps us continue to do what we do. Plus you're getting totally bang up savings on all your groceries. So use that link in the top line of the description underneath this video. Now conventional science and wisdom from the last, I don't know, multiple decades on autophagy shows that when you consume protein, you spike mTOR. Okay, so mTOR is pro-growth. And when you eat protein, it's pro-growth. And mTOR directly inhibits autophagy. They're opposing forces. In fact, there was a study that was published in Scientific Reports, looked directly at mice because it illustrates it perfectly. When they gave mice whey protein shakes, it would increase mRNA levels of mTOR and also expression of proteins associated with mTOR. So flat out, protein would increase mTOR, which is quote unquote, bad for autophagy because they are opposing forces. So how on earth is it even possible that consuming protein will not stop autophagy when protein literally stimulates mTOR at its core? Well, we do need to understand what's happening a little bit mechanistically. So I apologize that it's gonna get into the weeds a tiny bit, but I'll break it down so that maybe you learn something from it and it doesn't just sound like gobbledygook. When autophagy occurs, it happens because we have the activation of a particular pathway, okay, called ULK1. ULK1 forms a complex with these other compounds, namely ATG13. Okay, basically what happens is they fuse together, they form a complex, and it ends up triggering autophagy. But this autophagy occurs because this complex this, that was formed gets acted upon by stress, in this case, AMPK. So exercise is stress, that's why exercise induces autophagy. Fasting is stress, caloric restriction is stress, all of which induce autophagy in a healthy body, okay? As a matter of fact, exercise induces autophagy probably two, three, four times more than fasting. Okay, it's anytime you're stressing the body, this complex will form and autophagy starts. Now when food is present, when nutrients are present and mTOR is active, it phosphorylates, basically locks up that ATG13 that I mentioned. Okay, so it makes it so that that complex cannot form and subsequently autophagy cannot occur. So that is why molecularly or mechanistically, when food is present, it's very difficult or impossible for autophagy to kickstart. But now we're seeing interesting stuff. So this study was published in Cell Reports, and you hopefully have seen my other videos talking about this study in a different context, because what this study found, which was the big highlight of the study, was that you can consume 100 grams of protein, possibly no upper limit, and still have maximal protein synthesis occur, basically no matter how much protein you consume based upon this study. So they looked at people that consumed 25 grams of protein or 100 grams of protein after a workout. People that consumed 100 grams of protein 
still had increased levels of muscle protein synthesis, they did not waste the protein. It continued to help muscle protein synthesis. Huge, amazing news, meaning you can sit down in one sitting after a fast or whatever, eat a bunch of protein, and you're probably gonna assimilate it. Super good news. But that's not the point of this video. There was a portion of that study that isn't getting talked about and isn't getting the recognition it deserves. I'm gonna read it to you. The ingestion of a single large amount of protein resulted in prolonged anabolism without compromising whole body protein breakdown, without compromising muscle mTOR signaling, or without compromising markers of autophagy. That last section is the most important thing. Even in the presence of 100 gram servings of protein, in healthy, lean individuals, it did not disrupt the markers of autophagy. What does this mean? It means that after your fast or after your workout, consuming protein and protein only in this particular case is not going to stop autophagy. The autophagy can continue on. But there's something that we really have to take close attention to. This study looked at lean, healthy individuals. We know something about overweight or obese subjects, and it's unfortunate in the world of autophagy, and it might sound discouraging, but it should actually be the opposite. It should encourage you to push harder. And it's the fact that autophagy is somewhat dysfunctional if you're overweight or obese. So what we've seen in mice and human model data is that autophagy genes will be elevated at baseline. Okay, so above lean. But when they actually look at the rate of autophagic flux in a fat cell, like the actual rates of autophagy, it doesn't change. So what's happening is it's trying to kickstart autophagy, but there is a dysfunction in an obese individual that is making it so that autophagy doesn't really kick in. So it's like you're trying to start the engine, like the starter's cranking, but the motor's not actually kicking on. So the autophagy genes are elevated, indicating that autophagy is higher, but it's sort of a proxy and it's not really higher. What this is demonstrating is that autophagy seems to only be effective in people that are not obese. Is this extremely discouraging? Yes, it is, but it means that the more that you can drop the weight off, the more that autophagy is going to kick in. It's one more incentive to drop the weight. Because realistically, let's be real here, what good is autophagy going to be if you're very, very overweight and you have all these other risk factors and issues, right? So you gotta get the weight off for autophagy to do its job. Think of it like this. You have to recycle through all the fat tissue before you can start recycling the cells. Let's just, that's scientifically inaccurate, but it illustrates the point. Okay, it seems like we've got off on a tangent, but I have a point with all of this. There is a solid point. Why did the protein not affect autophagy in the healthy, lean people? Because autophagy is a very powerful thing and it seems as though if metabolic rate is good, and we can connect the dots a little bit here, if there are lean, healthy people that were not obese, the protein was not enough of an issue to supersede the stressor from the exercise or the deficit. So therefore, the protein did not impede the autophagic signaling, the autophagic flux. What that means in simple human terms is that if you are healthy and lean, and no need to be like six-pack shredded lean, but just not obese, protein is not going to impact your autophagy. And that's simply because the power of being lean and having the power of lean body mass and high protein intake is going to supersede everything else. At least it seems. So my suggestion for you here is at the end of a fast or if you're in a deficit, now more than ever are we seeing that it's more important to increase your lean protein intake. So at the end of a fast, it doesn't need to be a big juicy ribeye. It needs to be something like a lean protein shake, lean chicken, lean tuna, lean meat, and get that protein high feasibly with no potential upper limit based upon the literature but I'm sure there is an upper limit. But as of right now, there was no drop off, so you could increase the protein. That's gonna do a couple of things. If you're healthy and lean already, it's not gonna drop autophagy off. And if you are overweight and you do need weight to lose, it's gonna keep you satiated so you do lose the weight. And even if there was autophagy occurring, you're not gonna disrupt it. It's good news all around. Load up on the protein, it's not going to stop autophagy, and 
you're going to utilize it. I'll see you tomorrow.